Hello, my name is Samuel Monroe, and this is the DIY Project Organizer, which can be found at diyprojectorganizer.web.app. The purpose of this project was to create an organizational tool that would help with personal projects such as building a computer, 3D printer, or any sort of other thing. I find that when projects have many pieces and processes that need to work together, some things can be lost in the process. The intention of this tool is to help users by doing the organization for them. No more sticky notes or trying to memorize every little bit of the project. We'll start on the home page, which generates dynamically based on whether the user is logged in or not. I'm going to go ahead and log in, but feel free to create an account if you'd like to. Once logged in, you can see a dashboard of your current projects, quick links, and categories, which we'll get to later. First, we'll go to the side nav bar and click on My Projects. This is a quick overview of every single project that you have. You can search through the projects, drill down deeper into them, which we'll do in a minute, or create a new one. I'm going to create a new project. We'll put a name in and a description. Now the project is added to the grid. Within each project, you can drill down to see more detailed information. You can also edit and delete, just like I am here with the description. Now that the project's description is edited, we're going to go ahead and delete it. Once deleted, it's gone from the grid and never seen again. You can also search through the projects that you currently have. If you have a large amount of projects, it might be more feasible just to search for the one you're looking for. So I'll search in Firebase as a keyword, and only the Firebase project will show up. To clear the search, just clear the search bar and click the button again. The next major feature of the website is the parts library, which is similar to the projects page, except that you have a whole library of parts that you add to this page. Parts then can be added to existing projects. Parts are also sorted by category. So we'll create a new category here called wiring by clicking the purple band in the dropdown. After the category is created, it is visible in the dropdown. Let's add a new part and add it to the wiring category. As you can see, wiring is now a selectable category. Once the part is added to the list, it auto populates and you can click on it. Instead of bringing up a dialogue or a drill down, it actually just focuses the part information on, a, on the right side of the page. You can then update all the attributes and delete the parts as you wish. Just like projects, parts can be searched through using keywords. For instance, if we just wanted to find stuff with wiring, we could just search for wiring. This is the bad way to do this, because you can just sort the entire list by category. And then there's the wiring harness, the same as B. You can also just search within a category. So if you have a lot of wiring parts and you want to find something specific, you can just search it. Categories can be deleted with a garbage can by the dropdown, or you can just clear the search and come back to the default page. The next major part of the website is the resources page, which is a place to store resources that will soon be added to future projects. These resources can be videos, blog posts, instructional manuals, or anything else. For instance, let's add a resource to the Firebase documentation. It shows up right there, and those links are clickable to take you exactly where you want to go. Resources are also searchable, just like the projects and parts. So let's search for the Firebase resource, and it's the only one that populates in the list. Resources can also be edited and deleted, just like everything else. Go ahead and delete the Agolia test resource now. Once resources and parts have been added to their respective libraries, they can be added to projects. So we'll go into the 3D printer project that we created earlier and add some parts and resources. The Add Parts page works identically to the Parts Library page, except that when you click on a part, it now redirects you back to your specific project and adds it to its list. This is the same for resources, so let's add the Firebase documentation to our 3D printer project. When clicking on a specific part, it brings up a dialog that shows all of the specific information for that part and an option to delete it from the project. This is the same for resources, except that there is no dialog because all of the information is shown on screen. The home page shows information relevant to your account. As you can see, that 3D printer project we created earlier, along with its total cost and all the components and resources added to it. You can also click on any one of those parts categories, which will take you right to the parts library page already sorting by that category. Finally, I'd like to address the topic for my technical document, which is searching through Firestore data. Firestore does not natively support searching, and so I used a third-party web service to do so for me called Algolia. Using a node server, my website communicates any changes made for the Firestore with Algolia, which then updates its internal indexes, which can be searched through later using get requests. Refer to my technical document for more information, and thank you for watching my video. Have a good day!